first graph, and one that you know will keep coming back, um, is a PPF production possibilities frontier or production possibilities curve. You might hear it referred to, you know, either of those ways. I prefer to think of it as a frontier. Because it's really giving you a boundary of possibilities in the short run. So I've always called it a PPF. You may see in your book that it's something else. You may see it differently on the test. But for me, it's the easiest way to remember it because it implies a couple of specific things. Now, a classic example. I'll give you actually two, but there's one that you're most likely to see. Now, the way you draw it, we're going to start in quadrant run. Uh, quadrant one, uh, just like any other graph that we've been doing all year. You're going to have one good on one axis, one good on the other. It doesn't matter which one you put where, for example, if you have to draw something like this on the free response. But we'll start with consumer goods. And on the other axis, we're going to put capital goods. What is the significance of having these two things on the axes? Consumer goods would be products that are bought by you. They're not used in further production. They are consumed. They're used up. You throw them away. Done. Capital goods, on the other hand, would be goods that are used in investment. This would be business spending on things like new machines and technology and equipment and things like that, computers, for example, that are used in production. So. What you typically see with this PPF is a shape where it's bowed out. What that implies is, first of all, that there is increasing opportunity cost between the resources that are used for these two goods. It does not have a constant slope. If it had a constant slope, then you would have a proportionate trade-off all the way down the curve, you don't get that here. Because the slope is going to be flat, and then it's going to get steeper, which says that trading one good for the other, you're going to give up more to get less. Increasing opportunity cost is typical for a PPF especially when the resources are not absolutely transferable between the two things. So that's why most of the time when you're dealing with a PPF, it's going to be bowed out like that. Now, in terms of what the different points mean that you're likely to see in a question or what you might be asked to draw, any point on the curve, on the curve, represents productive efficiency. That means that at points A, B, and C, we are using all of our resources effectively. You don't have any unemployment, you don't have any underemployment or underutilization of resources. If we are under the curve, then that means we've got resources that we're not using. This is bad. Okay? Being under the curve is not good. Any point that is off the curve is a point that is unattainable at current levels of resources. So if you had a question, for example, asking you which points are attainable, well, A, B, C, and D are all attainable because you can be at point D, but you don't want to be at point D because having high unemployment is bad. Having overcapacity is bad. You want to use all the resources that you've got effectively. In terms of deciding among the points on the curve, because if they're all productively efficient, then how do we make a decision as a society if we want to be closer to the consumer goods axis or more or less in the middle, or do we want to be closer to the capital goods axis? The difference 
in the choices among these points is a question of allocative efficiency. With allocative efficiency, what we're looking for is the combination of goods and services that is most desired by people in this economy. Now, if what we want, and this is a typical question that you might have to deal with, if what we want is to achieve long-term growth, growth means increasing GDP, then what you'll want is to be closer to the capital goods axis. Because you don't get an increase in GDP in the long run by producing consumer goods. Because that's just stuff that people go to the mall and buy, and that's great, and it makes people happy. But if what you want is a growing economy in the long run, you'd rather be down here. Because if you're spending money on machines, if you're producing more computers, if you are putting money into research and development and business investment, then that's going to be better for you long term. So that's the kind of question that you might see from this. Every point on the curve is productively efficient. To be allocatively efficient, you're choosing a point that gives you a particular combination. Point A, for example, is that combination. You have this many consumer goods, this many capital goods. Point B, as you move down the curve, you have fewer consumer goods, more capital goods. And point C, over here, it's obviously not lined up very well. Um, you're going to have... That's because your thumb is stuck on the edge. Thank you. Um, again, fewer consumer goods and even more capital goods. So this is why point C is more desirable for long-term growth, but again, it depends on what your society wants. So that's one classic example. I'm going to show you another in just a second. 